I've published a nine vi minute video on auto tools. Uh, it's titled on reading auto tools, second edition chapters one through eight. And in that particular video, I described what my, um, my sense of auto tools was, uh, in general. And I expressed my profound uh, pleasure in having uh, gotten through the main parts of the auto tools knowledge, right? So I now have auto tools knowledge, right? And Victor Ordu is a person who made a comment on that video. So Victor Ordu, this video is really for you. Uh, Victor, you asked the question, what is my take on CMake? Maybe in that video I'm referencing or the uh, one that's 20 minutes where I talk uh, more about auto tools and my perspective on auto tools, I basically mentioned that I had looked at CMake as one of the options I would use for uh, build automation, right? But that I had dismissed using CMake. So the way I see CMake, and this is your question, Victor Ordu, you asked me, what is my take on CMake? You know, you either use these systems as a user or you use it as a developer, right? And so, so if you're in IT, um, let's say you are a systems administrator, you are a um, person that deploys software, you don't build it, but you're pushing the software out to servers or you are installing the programs on desktops or you're setting up a script to distribute the programs onto desktops. You are in the user camp, right? So you're using the software. Let's say there's a program that you want to um, set up on your computer. You download it from SourceForge. You download it from maybe cnetsdownload.com or any number of sites, right? And it's a program that you have to you have to compile. It has to be compiled. Well, the person that put that program together decided that when they distributed it as source code, they would use CMake as the means for you to get it compiled, right? So I bring that up because many people are familiar with CMake in that fashion as a user, not as a developer. They're familiar with CMake as a user. So in my opinion and in my observation, when did I first start using CMake? I think it was, I'm gonna say 2007. So I've been using CMake for, for quite some time, right? And as a user, as a user. So when I look at using CMake as a user, as somebody that says, okay, I downloaded some software and I wanna follow the directions for uh, taking that source code and compiling it and translating it to a program that I could use right on my computer or compiling the li uh, libraries for some software development, right? CMake, what makes it, what makes CMake very popular is it's a GUI. It's a graphical user interface. Let's admit it. Using graphical user interfaces, using a visual screen with buttons that you can click, that's pretty straightforward. That's easy. Who doesn't want to use something like that, right? And so, yeah, you just install CMake. You install the CMake program. And then it just brings up a screen. You click on a button to point to the directory where the software uh, is, right? So you downloaded maybe a zip file. You unzipped it. And then you're going to take CMake and you're going to point it you're going to press the little three ellipses, right? Or something like that. You're going to point it to where that source code is. And then you're going to press another button to identify where the, the re end result should go. 
Okay, and then you're going to press some other buttons that's going to test it, test out the code, uh, check the dependencies. Some things will show up as it doesn't exist on the system. You make some changes, la la la, right? And it's a very interactive way for you to say, okay, let me get everything just right so that I can compile this program, right? So that's what CMake automates for you, right? Does the exact same thing that AutoTools does, right? So CMake is very easy to use for the target audience, the people that need to, that you want to install your software uh, from source code. You didn't give them the executable. You didn't give them the app. You didn't give them the program in its final form directly. Um, you gave them the opportunity to compile the program fresh on their system so that they can get the latest components or you gave them more uh, options to configure that program um, before it's put in a final form on their system. But it's done through a graphical screen and it makes it easy. And that's absolutely fine, okay? I like that aspect of CMake. Um, to be totally straightforward, I actually like that. Before I deep dived into auto tools, I said to myself, man, wouldn't it be nice if there was a, um, a GUI for auto tools? Now keep in mind, watch all my videos um, where I'm talking about writing C++ code in the command line and I'm um, using Linux and you know I got command lines going on and all this kind of stuff go to my blogs right uh, go shake talks technology dot wordpress dot com right you're gonna see uh, numerous articles about the command line and I'm building stuff in the command line I'm a huge believer in the command line but I did not see auto tools as core to what I was doing so I didn't mind saying, okay, let's use a GUI process for that. That's not core to what I'm doing. And that actually wasn't, um, that wasn't fully correct, right? And so I eventually, you know, said, okay, um, building this, the, these programs on the command line, if I'm able to do that in its raw form in C and C++, right? Uh, using the co the uh, the compilers and the linkers and using the make utility directly on the command line, then I need to continue that process, right? We don't need to take a shortcut. So that's what CMake is. It's a shortcut for those situations where we just simply don't want to use the command line. But you look at the long term of when you're building software, that's why I took the approach that I took with command line compilers, C, C++, Linux, and SSH and virtual machines and SSH into virtual machines through the command line, through the console, because those are mechanisms that will stand the test of time. I don't believe that over the course of many decades that what you will establish in a CMake project or other GUI tools like that will stand the test of time. Ask anybody that used Visual Studio and its predecessors in the 1990s right? You know, I was around for that time, okay? I, one day I may actually uh, date myself, but let's just say I'm older than I look, okay? Vegetarian diet, all of that good stuff, right? Um, makes me look really young, but um, I'm heading into my fifth decade. But Ask anybody that's used Visual Studio way back when and then whatever it was called. Well, it actually was broken up back then. You had Visual Basic by itself. You had Visual Interdev. You had Visual C++. Um, you had all of this, right? Um, then you had Visual Studio at some point, right? And so 
But ask anybody who used Visual Studio, those Visual Studio projects, they always have to be converted when you have major releases of Visual Studio throughout that span of time. Doesn't even matter that Visual Studio project formats, file formats might stabilize, may have stabilized between 2015 and now, maybe, right? Um, the thing is, if you've used Auto Tools and you use Make and you use C and you use C++ and you used these kind of tools in a command line form and you did it in the 1980s, you did it in the 1990s, you did it in the 2010s and you do it in the 2020s, you have a continuous line of succession with your software projects where you don't have major disruption in how you set up the file structures, how you put the projects together. You don't have these major rewrites of the exact same software every couple of years. That is not productive. That is not actual valuable input into the software development process. It really isn't. That's my opinion. Controversial opinion, people can disagree all they want. But it's like, why am I going to write a major program? Let's say I wrote, um, let, let's say I wrote AutoCAD or Adobe Photoshop. And you're going to tell me that I'm going to use Microsoft Visual Studio, a visual tool with menu buttons and all this kind of stuff. And then every five years, every three to five years, I have to hire new developers, rewrite the whole thing, right? Because some framework changed and the way you open up the project in the, the latest version of the tool has changed. Makes absolutely no sense. I could spend all that time converting projects into adding new functionality, adding new features. And yes, a major billion dollar corporation can throw the money into the pile to do that. But a developer running a indie operation where they're doing very well, very fabulous with what they're producing. You're telling me that they got to keep going with the winds and the, the, the this wild swings on the tools, subtracting all that in that time from the investment of functionality and the actual forward movement of the core technology that they're putting out. And so I see CMake as a distraction in that, that vein, right? So that's why I advocate for a more command line driven process for certain software development projects. The one that I'm doing uh, in private, right, for myself. Now, if I'm working for a major corporation or a big business or mid-sized business, software, doing software development, I'll use the visual tools. They're all about speed and quickness, right? But when we're talking about a project that transcends companies, transcends decades, and you've got a long-term vision, you say, hey, I would, love, I would love this program to last 50 years, 100 years. Then there is no way that I'm going to have that program depend on the uh, vicissitudes and the, the, um, the, the subjective swings of GUI technology. Graphical user interfaces are phenomenal, but they're also the most subjective um, um, encodings of processes that we have. And as such, right, they are going to be the most um, susceptible to wild swings in form, structure, and composition. And so tooling that we use that is tied to that, right, um, that will affect your technology. Now, you can have a process where you can go in and out. You can go in and out. And what I mean by that is you can structure your software development so that your build automation, and we're talking about CMake, we're talking about auto tools. You can even talk about uh, Nissan, you know, uh, the Google project, Nissan, right? Build uh, automation there. Um, where... Your software is set up in a directory structure and the code is set up in such a way where you can do it command line or you can do it through a visual GUI. You can go either way with that. That takes very care careful uh, setup. 
You're not going to open up IntelliJ IDEA. You're not going to open up tools from Ember Cardero. You're not going to open up Microsoft Visual Studio or Visuals uh, Code. You're not going to open up Apple X Code. You're not going to open up any of those tools and establish that structure. See, you got to think carefully about how those visual tools interface with your files, but that the command line approach is primary. That it has a, a, a structure to it and a form that is impervious or independent to the, um, the, the considerations of the visual tools. And so you can use the visual tools as an accelerant, right? I think using Qt Creator is a great idea, right? It's a great idea for um, C and C++ development. But so long as you have a, a project structure that, hey, when I want to take that project, and if I have the requisite skill sets, and I'm in a I'm in a situation where the visual tools are not available or they take too long to load for debugging something in real time, or they're just not appropriate uh, for the situation in which I need to modify the software a certain way, then I need that flexibility. And so that's why I think that CMake is not a good idea for me and the priorities that I've set on my projects. That may be a useful consideration for you, uh, Victor uh, Ordu right, um, in your consideration of how you do your software development. But keep in mind that everyone's situation is different. So what, what applies to me as a perspective may not apply to you. Um, but from my experience and looking at how technology shifts over time and whether you have a very short-term vision, a mid-term vision, or a long-term or ultra long-term vision with the technology that you're uh, composing and putting together that's going to impact the type of tools that you engage with some people are of the opinion that hey you need to just build this thing get this thing out out there and worry about that later there's a terminology in the software development field called technical debt i believe that whole mentality of ship things fast and break things, move fast and break things. It doesn't actually work. It doesn't actually work because you end up with so much technical debt following that process that you create your own um, high viscosity. You create your, your own um, um, uphill, your own uphill climb as it were, right? You, you make the journey um, up the hill steeper than it needs to be when you follow that. Whereas when you follow a more carefully crafted approach, which an indie developer or a smaller organization is more apt to do, then you have greater agility and you can move in a much more agile way, right? And so um, learning these command line tools and learning um, th their, their nuances, intricacies, their quirks, right? And getting engaged with that and, and being able to memorize the different commands and the different sequences and all of that, yes, that takes a lot more time than to use a visual tool like CMake or Visual Studio or IntelliJ IDEA or whatever, right? It does. No doubt about that. But once you got it, you are now more flexible and you're also more nimble. And in some ways, you are quicker in the way you're able to navigate through technology projects um, than if you just fully invest yourself in a, dare you say it, corporation's idea uh, in a visual fixed form of how you should navigate technology. So I hope this information was of a benefit to you, Victor Ordu, and whoever else um, is interested in this topic. and. This was recorded um, December 30th of 2022. And um, as such, I also wish you, Victor Ordu, your family, your friends, and your allies, um, a great and happy um, 2023. Much success to you and stay tuned.